Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Cracks Are Turning Problems Into Solutions. This is me Priya Shadas and today in this video we will be discussing the part 2 of the practice set 3 of a table based DI which will have theta questions in it. So if you haven't watched the first part please do check the link in the description box or the i button at the top and have a look over here. Practice the PDF and then you can come back and watch the video over here. And if you want to practice more such content with me live in my classes then you can join my free live classes at an academy. I come live at 1.30 p.m. And along with that, if you check and pro follow my profile there, the link of which I have provided in the description box, you will be getting notified of every time I come live along with the topics I'm going to take that day. So make sure you follow my profile there and join me in my free live classes to do some more practice and solve your doubts over there. And with this, I'm very happy to say that the exclusive CAT study material is finally here. And now everything is going to be covered under that study material. It's going to be so comprehensive that there will be around 48 modules in the part B and 15 modules in the part A where this will be given to you in both the digital and the paperback format. If you are a plus subscriber, then you would get access to these notes in the digital format. And if you are an iconic subscriber, then along with the digital format, these notes will be delivered right at your home at the included price of your subscription. Yes, you heard me right. Without paying any additional price, you would be getting all these study materials which will have practice questions, theories, FAQs, tips, strategies, everything included under one umbrella absolutely included in your subscription prices. So please, on very much popular demand, earlier it was just till May 11, but now because of the people demanding for additional days, this offer has been extended, but it will not last for longer. So make sure you check the link in the description box and enroll yourself either into a plus or an iconic subscription using my code Priyasha10 because that will give you an additional instant discount of 10% on your subscription along with this wonderful exclusive cat material covered under your subscription. This will be having various tests, various quizzes, all the FAQs, everything covered inside. So do not miss out on this at all and use the link in the description box and my code Priyasha10 to get it at a further reduced rate of 10%. And now let's get our video started. Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll be taking the part two of the practice set three, which was having some theta questions advanced level. So we discussed what to do in this set. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I request you to watch the previous video or get the practice PDF either from this video or from the previous video. Solve it all by yourself and then come back and watch these videos. It will be really helpful because once you get your approach, then you can compare your approach with mine and then solve the question. So in the previous video, I explained a lot of things about this. So in this video, I'll just keep it short to the answers, direct answers. And don't worry, the questions are also direct here. So let's quickly have a look over the question. Question number 13 says, how many more students passed in school S than in the school P in five years together? So this seems a direct data to me where I have to just make a comparison between school S and school P in all the five years. This is school P, this is school S and I have to make a comparison of the number of students who passed. So I have to add up the numbers over here and add up the numbers over here and find out the difference of the same. So keeping this data in mind, I'll go down and I'll solve this question number 13 over here. So for the 13th question, we just need to add up the data which is given to us. For school S, we have the data of 537 plus 489 students plus 512 students. Uh, this is across all the five years, 527 plus 496. Now this is something in which your speed calculations will help you a lot. So if you can do it orally, that would be better. It's 2500 and then the remaining part is 73. So you can apply your speed calculation skills over here and get your answer. That would be a better option than using a calculator. Calculator should only be used when you are stuck with decimals. Now we come to school P. So in school P comparison, what we will be doing here is, no, I mean uh, the question was, uh, just a second, I'll need to go back and check. So the question is saying me, uh, how many more students passed in school S than in school P? So over here, school P data we'll write down. School P data will be 
238 okay just a second i'll just zoom out always fidgets with me okay so in school p we have 238 as the first data 227 so you can do some mental calculation while you're writing down these numbers only and you can do it uh, mentally without writing down as well that will be totally fine but because i'm explaining i'm writing them down for you okay so therefore this is a number i get now they are asking you for the absolute difference no percentage nothing so absolute difference will be 2573 minus of 955 which will be equals to 1618 so my answer comes out to be as 1618 i'll go back and i'll just mention this in the, in the box 1618 we have to enter these numbers in the using the keyboard on screen keyboard so make sure data based questions are very very important see very important because they do not have any negative marking so you have to surely attempt these questions now comes the question number 14 which asks you the number of students who passed in the five school in the five schools in 2013 is what percentage more or less by 2015 so now we have to make a comparison of the data between 2013 and 2015 so and that too for number of students who are passing so we will be adding up the data over here we will be adding up all the data over here and we will see how many students are passing so this is the data to be added and then we add it we get the total number of students passing in 2013 so let's mention or write down this data this is for number 14 so for number 14 we see that in 2013 my data says that the number is 227 plus 118 Plus four hundred seven, plus four eighty nine, and plus three forty one. So that would give me a value equals to fifteen hundred and thirty two. Now the same data when compared for two thousand fifteen would give me what? Let's go back and check. For two thousand fifteen, the data is one hundred seventy two, one hundred eight, four fifty four, five twenty seven, and six three twenty four, three sixty four. So I'll just go and add that up as well. For 2015, the data is 172. Then plus I'll go for 108. Then I'll go for 454, 527 plus 364. Initially giving me 1625. Now what is the more or less we have? We have to compare the data over 2015. Remember. so the difference which we get from here is just 43 and we have to compare the data with 2015's data that is 1625 and get the answer now this is where you can use your skills i mean this is where you can use your uh, fraction skills or division skills okay you can just mention it like this that this is 4300 upon 1625 and just make a comparison on what value you would be getting in the quotient it's slightly more than the double i can see because 1625's double will be equals to 3250 and this number is slightly more than 3250 just make a comparison this is the process how you are supposed to make a comparison so just have a look over here and check 16 i need to get rid of this right now <laughs> 1625 always eating up my head so 1625 into 2 gives me 3250 fine and 1625 into 3 gives me how much that's a nice comparison so you can just do it and check that the answer will be somewhere 4875 this is a bigger number than this so this is not 3% this is somewhere 2 point something so but but you have to be precise now this is something i wanted to tell you people that when you have a theta question then in that case you are always expected to give a answer correct up to two decimal points if the answer is coming in decimals you are expected to give answer correct up to two decimal points so when this is the scenario the better thing would be to divide and check and that would give me the answer as 2.64 something which can 648 or 649 which can be rounded up to 2.65 
so answer should be always two digits after the decimal and rounded up so 2.65 percent is the answer which is which will be written in the theta form like this 2.65 okay so that's the absolute value you will be adding here and the last question for the day in which year was the pass percentage in five schools together the highest now this is yet another very very big comparison very very big comparison what we will be doing in this question number 15 is that we will be comparing the data across every year that means in 2012 there are five schools right so we will be comparing the data of the five schools now what five schools am i talking about so this is a very extensive question and what you are going to do in this question i'll tell you first look over here you have to compare this data you have to add all the numbers here that means add all the passing numbers find their sum like the sum will come around 1623 and then you have to add all the numbers which uh, shows the number of appaired students and that will give you 2287 make a fraction 1623 so i'll just write it write that down 1623 upon 2287 and then make a comparison like this for all the years so this is way too extensive isn't it like uh, if you are doing the calculation you can pause the video and do the calculation and then check check the answer my value for 2012 when i calculated this question was 1623 upon 2287 okay for 2013 the value was 1582 upon 2224 so you can just make a comparison so that you will get to know whether you did it right or wrong 1577 upon 2258 i'm pretty sure none of you will be doing this calculation because that is way too extensive now i'll tell you something about that as well so do not worry this is another fraction and the last fraction of 2016 says 1591 upon 2226 now what i need to tell you here that you have to make a comparison and get the highest value of the fraction so you will be dividing it using the calculator and getting the answer that the highest value comes up for this fraction but how and why we will discuss that later but before that we, we will be finding out one important thing one important thing is how to deal with such questions in the exam this is extremely time consuming so for these type of questions you can take it, keep it at round three what is round three the process of doing these questions is round one you will skim through the questions and attempt all the questions you feel is doable and can be completed within a minute or two then round two is something which you have marked for review which you want to think over and understand and do and round three is just the calculative part because when you come to round three you you are at a stage where you cannot do the remaining questions that means you cannot understand it or you can't do it or you're in a stage where you have already done a few questions. So the questions which you have then left are in following in the round three, which are calculative questions like they, this rarely happens, but still letting you know that if you have, you are still left with five minutes uh, of your sectional time, then you can surely go and try this out. Otherwise, if this is a theta question, you can take a guess over here as well. So no, no harm in taking a guess in such questions. So you can take a guess looking upon the fractions or else use your calculator to get the answer. So if I use my calculator to get the answer, I'll be getting the fraction of 1582 upon 2224 as something closer to 71.73%. Okay, 71.13%. So which is really the highest value over here and that would be my answer so i'll take up 2013 as my answer i'll mention this in the theta question as well that is 2013 so this was the process how you're supposed to work with such an advanced set so make sure when you're working with an advanced set like this you're always going to focus on the approximations and at the same time you're going to focus on whether the question is to be done in round three round two or round one that's a major decision making skill required out of you students there okay so that was all about this video guys if you like this video then please like this video share it with more and more people and if you're new to this channel then please subscribe to the channel as well i'll be up with more such videos so please keep ourselves updated with the channel i'll try to complete the entire syllabus before the examination 
hoping to you know see you flying out with colorful wings all over after the exam is over wishing all the best to you and wishing you good health as well now let's wind up this video thank you so much see you soon